Caddis Maximus here. This time we're going to detect, de detect, I already detect this is a piece of junk and nobody should buy Bosch oscillating tools. Great rotary hammers, great jig saws. The br grinders are pretty good, but they just can't get it together, it seems, with their oscillating tools. The first, first generation of oscillating tools had a problem with the fork wearing out so that the motor would go, but the spindle wouldn't rock left and right, back and forth. So they had this, came out with an upgraded MX25E Multi-X, and they fix that problem. It doesn't rotate. Instead, they have like some kind of horrible miscalculation uh, in the engineering of the head so that the bearing supports end up wearing out, and you have come up with this situation. That can't happen. There are two things about oscillating tools that have to be tight. The fork so that the power is delivered from the motor, rotating it, because these things only go back and forth. On average, three degrees. I recommend the Makita quartered one, and it's one of the best. It has very large, pre-tensioned, oversized bearings. The spindles on the Makitas are just absolutely dead tight. The fork and rotation is absolutely dead tight and makes for a very effective oscillating tool. This, having the bearings wear out so badly, uh, actually ruins the tool. This tool is worthless. And who's going to spend $65, which is what it costs to replace the head on that? The Dremel ones even last longer than these Bosch's, but they also will end up suffering from the same issue. Just like the Harbor Freight Bowers with the plastic uh, cases on them. They start out okay, and then the plastic starts wallowing out, and then it fails. I believe this may actually be an in, uh, aluminum casting internally, but we'll find out. And the big issue is, is the, these only move back and forth three degrees. For a, bu a budget option would be the Rockwell F80. And yeah, it's surprising that Rockwell, I mean, now that they're more of a budget brand, even as a budget brand, Ossing Tools has kind of been their thing, but the F80 has this five, the switchable in the wood is five degrees sweep. But on this like Rockwell, this spindle right here, there's absolutely zero play, just none. You cannot feel just even the slightest amount of motion, not in and out, not side to side, not rocking back and forth absolutely dead tight and that's why these get halfway decent reviews not to you don't need much power with these tools you just need a really nice spindle set up so that it delivers that power and so anyway just totally ridiculous that Bosch on a second at least a second generation unit I mean look how the spindle pulls in and out I mean in this side play here maybe you can see better this way is just crazy that's a huge amount and the reason it ruins the tool is because it, since the blades move so such a small amount, it needs to be rigid so that all the power that's being delivered is actually making the blade go back and forth. When the spindle gets that way, because of the small amount of motion, what ends up happening is the front of the blade stays in the same place, and the tool itself is just vibrating around, not doing anything. And, you know, it's just crazy for Bosch for their rotary hammers and grinders and jigsaws to be so good for them to just you know screw the pooch on their oscillating tools it's so bad that i will never i mean i bought this one for cheap i had a coupon for a discount store because i donated some stuff and i think i got this for like nine dollars or something with the coupon and thought it was a kind of a nice item at the junk store but felt the spindle because I knew about it and decided to actually buy it just to hopefully save somebody some money. Don't ever buy these used. Don't buy them from junkyards or I mean from junk stores or habitats or garage sales. They're just worthless. I mean they are absolutely worthless and you just can't figure out you know for the, the rest of the build quality is really pretty good on these. I mean great I mean, good motor, good variable speed, long-lasting brushes. You know, they have this weird kind of cord thing, which doesn't really do any good. All it does is offset some of the external fatigue on the cord to the inter internals of the body. And this means it's a more exp expensive tool because you have more complex over moldings. You have this little extra plastic piece in there. And it makes virtually no, that extra bit of flex makes virtually no difference because almost all power cords will start to fail right here at the edge of the strain relief because, quite frankly, the strain release need to be really progressive, really thick, thinner and thinner to almost nothing in order to 
prevent uh, the cord from having a sharp bend. That's, you know, the root cause of the failures. Let's get this last screw out of here, all T20s it seems. But I just can't believe Bosch can't just, you know, either they just don't respond to any customer feedback, they're not aware of warranty repairs. I'm sure there's plenty of warranty claims on a tool like this. Let's see if I can get it out with... Okay, so it is, and what that's even worse. It's a, a cast aluminum gear case. It doesn't have gears, but power case, and uh, still has those horrific issues with the bearings failing. I mean, it is super small. It's crazy how much extra bulk they're using to try to that this adds. They also have some weird anti-vibration pad in there. I'm also surprised to see it being open, but. Put this back on to, because I figured out the source of the problem. It's if you really tighten down the screws, then it helps stabilize it. But unfortunately, what ends up happening is that you're constantly using this. And so what it is, is it's a engineering failure of having the gearbox be properly seated to the motor case to keep it from wanting to move around. But as soon as there's a little bit of pressure, and since these screws are in plastic... You're going to use this, there will be heat generated as well as vibration, and there'll just be a little bit of loss of pressure, and as soon as that happens, the whole internal gear case starts wobbling back and forth within the plastic housing and against the motor housing. And so that's the root cause. It can be fixed, but the evidence was right here. You can see where the bottom of these are silvered, and what's happening is that's because this gearbox is getting loose under that plastic case and is able to move back and forth, side to side, up and down. It actually turns out that the spindle in this aluminum power case is actually, there's a little bit of looseness, but it's okay. As a matter of fact, if you look in this screw hole, you can see where the gearbox has been racking against the threads of the screw, leaving uh, witness marks in there. Probably the best solution is there's, they should have used more specialized screws that were threads on the bottom and then had like a smooth, full diameter shank that was just the right size for these holes so that the four screws would have stabilized this power case and prevented it from shifting around. So yeah, I could tighten the screws and it would work for a time until the vibration of a, this tool started to... Loosen them up. Maybe you put a lot of force on it and get it to initially shift in one side. And then it starts to want to slip on this. And then your performance quickly just falls off to nothing. So I'll finish tearing this down. I mean, there isn't a solution to that. You're going to be constantly having to check and torque down these gearbox screws. And guess what happens when you are constantly retorquing screws in the plastic? those threads start smearing and pulling the plastic, start slowly stripping the plastic out. So it becomes a, uh, you know, like a progressive effect where you're, you know, first it may last a few weeks or a couple of months, and then it may last a month or just a few weeks, and then it'll turn into days. Uh, and then, you know, you'll tighten the screws and you may get away with using it for an hour before they come loose. And then it just ends up being totally worthless, which is, you know, such a shame. Why isn't this brush cover? Wow. We can see how little use this tool has. The brushes are almost like new. Might as well finish this tear down. Uh, and it's just so unfortunate. Something else they could have done is change the molding so that the gearbox would have sat and kind of as a, not a press fit, but just a really tight fit into this one piece molded motor housing. And that would have helped stabilize the gearbox as well. So this thing, you know, even if I were to re-donate it or give it to someone, it's just going to end up causing them grief and frustration because it'll work for a while and you'll think it's a nice Bosch and wonder why the heck uh, it just seems to get slower and slower. So the only thing I'm going to do is harvest it for some parts here, like pulling out these brushes, keep those for something. Maybe another Bosch tool. 
Actually, I should probably just pull out the whole brush guide. These are the kind of things that you do, that and the fasteners, are the kind of things you do want to keep from tools like this. Where is our other wire? Oh, interesting. They, sp oh, I see. It's not sp spot welded. It's just kind of an interesting connector. I mean, it's crazy they have this attention. It looks like that is a slip-on connector that was uh, spot welded, but I'm not sure. No, it wasn't spot welded. It just happened to be one that was had just a high tension to it. So anyway, if people are wondering how auto stop brushes work, the ones that they have either they rely on just the spring stop, but this also has an additional wire stop. And so when the brushes advance, they stop at some point and then the tool stops working and then what it does is prevents it from running all the way down to nothing and then the armature starts grinding on the spring and ruining the tool. Might as well take a look at the motor here. That's some soft plastic right there. Do a little fan guide and shroud. I mean, they're really trying. Actually, I think this is for the uh, position ring. We do have a sealed rear ball bearing. Pretty decent little motor on there. That was a bear to pry apart. They have this really tight O-ring to help try to keep the grease in there, although it's very... I mean, you don't really need much grease. That's even a sealed bearing. Actually, that is not. That's just an exposed cage. But as a special bearing, you can see where it has a curved surface as the fork wobbles back and forth. We can see that it is steel on steel now versus the old ones. And this whole system keeps the motor position well, but it doesn't really matter because what you're holding on to is the body of the tool. And so what ends up happening is actually it's the whole gearbox and motor that's wobbling back and forth. It's just super disappointing. Such a shame. One of the rare tools that actually has epoxy coated field. There's our obligatory uh, anti-theft built into the tool. And as far as I can tell, it's not looking just such a shame because it is the truth. I mean, I've worked on enough just corded drills where the gearbox uh, screws just get loose. And a tool like this, it's even worse for so many things it has going for it, such as everything being T20, including the screws that hold the cord pinch on so you don't have to have multiple tools although you do need a t10 to replace the brush guides and they even do something where they have little screw terminals so it's like should be pretty darn easy to replace the screws that's just uh, it's an oversight for an issue that would have only been discovered if they really um, put it through harder testing rather than, you know, it seems to work. It's a lot of times, you know, defects can be pretty severe, but they may not be immediate defects. It's like one of the theories about why there's so much, well, it isn't just cancers rising in young people, but cancers in older people is because the average human lifespan up until basically a century ago was around 35 years. And so... The deal is, is that a lot of people were going to end up with cancers. They were just dying the other stuff before it was cancer that ended, ends up doing them in. So now people live so much longer, you get us now see, you know, the true nature of things like cancer rates. Here's the switch portion. It's actually a very kind of specialized switch. I can't, it's all potted in there. I wonder what, why it has three connectors. Pretty solid. A more expensive setup here. Uh, you would think they just use like an angle grinder switch or something more standardized like that. Um, this is a magnet ring. We can actually see two little wires from the controller going up here. Those aren't power wires. Those are for a little sensor. So it's a constant speed unit. I don't know exactly how they attach this last portion in there. It's seemingly like it's on some type of dovetail and it would slide out. 
that does slide out and this is indeed the sensor and it just sits on a little spot right up there and so here is the constant speed controller pretty simple device but with a little bit more electronics than just a what's known as a triac based variable speed like a lot of variable speed uh, quarter drills this has a little bit of extra electronics for the comparison you set the dial a particular portion it gains a tone off this uh, from the pulses on the magnet and then when if the dial stays in the same position if the pulses reduce it automatically increases voltage increase power and if for some reason the rpms are too high given a dial position it will cut voltage and then some you know probably some capacitors and stuff to prevent it from hunting back and forth known as hysteresis um antihysteresis was also a big deal of early computerized automatic transmissions that's what you know if you're going up a hill and you would downshift and you'd accelerate a little bit then it would upshift and then you'd slow down that back and forth was known as hysteresis and it was like actually surprisingly late i think it was the early 90s before transmissions really started to figure out that if you're going up a hill and it saw that it went back and forth a few a uh, certain number of times that it would just stay in the lower gear unless the throttle level really was dramatically reduced. Anyway, there is the teardown, a little bit of a longer video of the Bosch MX25E multi-ax. And so the root cause, the absolute root cause of the failure, surprisingly heavy gearbox, is actually, it does have tight, good bearings in the gearbox. What it doesn't have is a real good setup that holds the gearbox real, this cast metal piece and so it just and with all the forces of it vibrating back and forth even with the tight screws it will end up shifting as soon as it starts to shift it just quickly gets much worse particularly because i mean we can even see how it's rattling and starting to wear there and they need something where like this the whole gearbox need to really sit into the motor housing or once again these gearbox screws need to have a a uh, full diameter smooth portion that help maintain and hold the gearbox in the position so because of all the actual nice engineering that was in this uh that one oversight just makes these things terrible i mean it's just no question you're gonna end up having that same problem all these will it's just a matter of how hard they're used and for exactly how much time and retightening the screws i mean on drills once you tighten the gearbox screws they stay tight for quite some time because they just aren't being jerked and torqued back and forth upwards of twenty thousand times a minute like they are in these oscillating tools anyway thanks for watching